I sentence you in case number 91-463 to death for the murder of Troy Burris. Case number 91-304, I sentence you to death for the murder of Charles Humphreys. Case number 91-112, Citrus County case number, I sentence you to death for the murder of David Spears. Thank you. And uh, probably see, uh, I'll be up in heaven while y'all are rotting in hell. Well, he will handle that. Get not in the Okay, there will be an automatic appeal. You have the right to an appeal. Mr. Glazer, is that going to be handled by you May or the public defender? your wife and kids uh, get raped. I would ask that uh, you would appoint right the public defender's ass. office. Okay, I'll, the I'll appoint the public defender's office uh, to handle the appeal. There's one other thing that I want to say that I think needs to be said. I knew I was raped. And you weren't nothing but a bunch of scum. Therefore, these proceedings are now Putting completed. somebody who was raped right, to death or the mother. Steve played this song to Lee after she received the death sentences. Just before they serve him one last meal, shave his head, then tell him how he feels. The warden comes to say goodbye. Reporters come to watch him die. Watch him as he's strapped into the chair. Have you seen the Iron Lady's charms? Legs of steel, leather on her arms. Strapping on a man to die, a life for life, an eye for an eye. And death's the Iron Lady in the chair. I've been saying that in a long time. I'll do it again later, but uh, I just haven't seen it in a long, long time. What does Lee think of that song? I gave her a copy of it, and I sang it for her. In, uh, the, in, I didn't have my guitar, but I sang it for her in the cell, and, and, she, and she, she enjoyed it, especially the part about uh, in the courtroom, watch the balance of the scales. If the price is right, there's time for more appeals. The strings are pulled, the switches stayed, the finest lawyer's fees are paid, and a rich man's never died upon the chair. We traveled down to visit Lee at this maximum security prison on the edge of the Everglades, a seven-hour trip from Gainesville, where Steve and Arlene live. I learned that Lee was now enormously depressed. She desperately missed Tyria and barely communicated with anyone. Arlene and Steve still hadn't heard from Lee since we'd first arrived in Florida over two weeks ago and I realized their relationship with Lee was not as close as I had first thought. Lee is living in a six by eight cell on death row. We had arranged through the superintendent to meet her at the prison chapel. Um, I'm Lieutenant Dodrill, and we were just trying to get um, inmate Warnos. We told her that you were here and she's refusing a uh, visit. She's refusing a visit? I just told her, to, I just told the officer in confinement to get it in writing. So she, we have it written, we're gonna get it in writing. I can't believe refusing. this. She says um, something about her laundry is not back and she doesn't want to wear a dress and she's just being rough. She doesn't have to wear a dress. But she, she won't get dressed prop to she go to. She won't get dressed. Yeah, so. It's I ridiculous because we've come all the way down from Gainesville. Yeah. I know. Uh, every time we ask her, you know, she's just really un uncooperative. She's just, I mean, we can't force it to do it. So, but she's, but I am getting her to write it in writing so that I won't get in trouble for not having you visit. No, so. yeah. Hello. Hi. We were looking for you. You walked in this heat? Well, it's not that. <clears throat> Why didn't you drive out? Because the gate was locked down. Oh, door. it's just for the horses not to get out. Ah. So how did it go? Well, it... Rita rolled her eyes. This is not good. I have more bumps. <laughs> this is terrible. She wouldn't, uh, she wouldn't talk to us. She wouldn't see us. Why? 
no idea. She just wouldn't. She just didn't want to talk. Didn't want to say anything. Didn't want to communicate. So we didn't get anywhere. That's a shock. That's a total shock. Well, Steve's going Thursday, so go back with Steve. I mean, do you have any idea why she might not have wanted to? Arlene and Steve were still protesting that they didn't know what was wrong with Lee. They seemed unable to explain why they still hadn't heard from her. So in a sense, you know, now we're trying to find out from you what. <clears throat> the only thing I can think of is because I was honest with her and sort of disciplinarian that perhaps she was trying to punish both Steve and I. You know, we lost the trial, and, and yet she's, she said, I want to die. How are you disciplinarian? I mean, what? I wrote letters, and I told her that she acted terrible in the courtroom and that, you know, she better improve her behavior, and she would, I was is very when she, in her. And, is that when she gave the judge the bird? Or? Yes, yes. And I wrote a very strong letter. <clears throat> I also told her I was sick of her doubting me and doubting Steve, that he was a very honest human being. He did just what she wanted, and because we lost, that was not his fault. Mm. So I feel, in a sense, that perhaps with the money, she knows the devastation financially that we are in, and she could help now. <clears throat> and this is her way of punishing me and punishing Steve by saying, well, good, we could get this money if I gave an interview. I'm not doing it. Why do you think she was so mad at both of you at the end of the last trial? Because we lost, because she has three death sentences. She said she wanted to die, but in her heart she wants to live. So you know how you say, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, feed me, but you really don't want to eat? That's basically it. I want to die, I want to die. But when she got the three death sentences, she was furious. That's why she gave him the bird. If it comes, it comes, and when it comes, it comes. Steve, though, was still insisting Lee wanted to die. His whole justification for entering a guilty plea for Lee was that she wanted to go to the chair. And you're sure she wants to go to the electric chair? Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure that uh, in her anger and grief and torment, and the fact that it's very, very hard to live with the fact that she killed seven men, seven people, that she does want to die for it. She cried in the courtroom when she read her statement. She said, I'm not afraid to die, but if you feel it necessary to kill me, so be it. And I, as I told her from the beginning, I'll help her. I don't feel comfortable, but I'll sit there with her when they uh, strap her in. She. Uh, she asked that I be there for her. She said, well, will you be there with me? And I said, Lee, you're allowed to have a lawyer and a, and a, a, a member of the clergy. If you want me there, I'll, I'll, I'll walk right up to there with you. And I'll be with you in the final moments. And then I'll have to deal with the, I'll have to deal with uh, that pain later. I have spoken to several lawyers who have witnessed the execution of their clients. And, and they assured me it's something that they live with forever. It's nothing I look forward to, but as her friend, and I hope I'm becoming her friend, I, would, I will be there for her. And I'll give her the advice that Woody Allen gave in his movie. I think it was Take the... It was, I don't remember the movie. It might have been Take the Money and Run. The lawyer's advice to the client who gets the electric chair is don't sit down. They call this the death house. If Lee is electrocuted, she will be the first woman ever in the state of Florida to have gone to the chair. This is the cell that the inmate is kept in uh, up to seven days prior to his execution. About five o'clock in the morning, he's brought out where he is shaved, his head is shaved, and his right leg is shaved. And then he is brought through this door, which proceeds down a corridor, which goes to where the electric chair is. As he's going down the hallways, he's escorted by the assistant superintendent and the correctional officer chief and is brought in here to the actual chamber. At this point, he is seated in the chair in front of the news media witnesses and the official witnesses who are already seated in the uh, witness area. He's brought in and put into the chair and the straps are placed around his chest and around his lap and on his arms. 